Hello everyone and welcome to CMB Extra, it's my Chester and Persona 5 Royale. Uh, I've got it, I've been playing it, I have it here. I got the last Steelbook version. I was so happy. <laughs> so yeah, Steelbook, pretty cool. Um, but I've been playing through it and I thought I'd make a uh, put down blue. Uh, I thought I'd make a little first impressions of how I'm going with my first 10 or so hours with the game. I want to talk about this isn't a review. I plan on doing a review in a few months when I've played through the game possibly twice, had some time for my thoughts to kind of develop and all that type of stuff. I'm not going to be slapping one out uh, while the game's still popular because as we all know, I like to wait till no one cares before I release any type of video. But I say, hey, this one's a bit different. But I just wanted to talk about some of the things that I've been uh, experiencing with my game so far and how much I've really been really enjoying it. But I also wanted to talk about whether the game is really worth the, the difference or so. so um, I worked out the kind of the price difference. So for EV games here in Australia, uh, you can buy the original game pre-owned for $54. On the PlayStation Store, you can download it for like $100 still. Um, that's probably gonna change now that Royale's out because like no one's gonna spend $100 on the base game when the, the new game is also $100. Um, but of course, Royale on EV Games is $99. So that's a difference of $45. So that's, that's quite a, a big difference across the two of them. Once again, that is pre-owned. EB Games doesn't really stock very many JRPGs, so they only really have pre-owned of it at this point. But you can also get the Steelbook version for $100 as well. I mean, come on, it's, it's the Steelbook version. It's the Steelbook version <laughs> for the same price as normal. It also comes with like some theme thing, which I haven't been able to uh, put in yet because I got the game a few days earlier than I was supposed to. So let's talk about the first thing that really hit me while I was playing through this game, and that is the graphics difference. So it looks, ooh, ooh, ooh. it looks stunning. It looks so good. Uh, you can't really tell on YouTube, but once you play the game, it looks really good. And I love the way this game looks. Um, you I'll have to wait and see. Uh, who knows? I'll probably do in the review, but we'll probably get some videos once the game properly comes out. Uh, of comparisons between the PlayStation 3 version of the original game, the PlayStation 4 version of the original game, and the, the new version, Royale, on PlayStation 4. It'll be really interesting to see some comparisons of that. From what I can tell, basically, everything just seems way sharper, clearer, color, like colors are so much more defined, uh, the in-game animations are way better, they feel, it kind of flows better from the animated stuff to the actual in-game animated stuff, like the facial animations, all that type of stuff looks much better. It feels like the engine has been really fine-tuned and really beefed up in the extra few months of development time they've had, and you can really tell that with just kind of the, the cleanness and the sharpness and all that type of stuff. It looks way better than the first game. It might just be in my mind. We'll have to wait until we see some proper comparison videos, but it looks... <laughs> and so far from what I've experienced, once again, this is just the first 10 hours, so the first palace and starting to get into the second one. This is the absolute premier way, the best way to play Persona 5. Absolutely the best way. Just how golden is the best way to experience Persona 4, this is the best way to experience Persona 5. Absolutely, hands down. And that's all because the implementation of the new content feels so clean. It feels like it was always meant to be there, this new content. It feels like these new characters were always meant to be there. It feels like the different changes they were, they've were they done felt like they were meant to be there. It felt like they were on the drawing board with everything else when this game was first come up with and they just had to wipe them basically off the board because they didn't have enough time and they needed to push it out. And they've finally been able to implement them the way they always wanted. It feels like this is the way the game was always meant to be. And as someone who adores this game, I'm very happy about that. <laughs> the main reason why I'm really happy about that is it feels like it's the first playthrough all over again because you don't know 100% what to expect. You don't know how these new characters are going to affect the other ones. You don't know how these new systems are going to affect stuff. It feels like you're going into it for the first time in a lot of ways. Not 100% because of course you know Oh, come and shoot is bad. Oh, this is bad. You, you know that type of stuff, but it's like, it feels fresher, and I'm really happy about that. So some of my favorite changes so far are just the quality of life alterations, like allowing me to do stuff even after going to a palace. I can now study, I can do all this stuff, I can clean LeBlanc. LeBlanc? I don't know how to pronounce it anymore. 
you can do all this stuff finally when you get back home after the palace. You're not always get, being told by Morgana, good boop! And it is so good. I'm so happy about that because I can finally come home and I can actually get through stuff. I can read stuff quicker, all this type of stuff. It is so good! So now here's the biggest and best changes. I'm going to be completely reading off the script I have here just because I want to get it all right. So I'm not going to be looking here. So the biggest and best changes are the new alterations to the combat. The completely redefine it and gives it a totally new flavor, completely different meta and a brand new focus that undoubtedly makes it the best combat loop in the entire series. There is no question. It is an absolute joy to play and that's because they've made the baton pass so much more important. It is essential to gameplay. I think I used the baton pass twice in my first playthrough of the original game. Just because I was like, well, why would I ever use it? It's, it seems dumb, just let me focus with each character one by one. They have made it essential. Let me make it clear for anyone about to like explode onto their keyboard. Yes, these things were still in the original game, including the uh, bonuses to attack and all that type of stuff, but they put a whole lot more focus on it through cutscenes and through conversation and all that type of stuff, making it much more of an integral part of gameplay than it originally was in the first game by putting a lot more focus onto it and a lot more conversation around it than there was in the original one. This in part with the, uh, well, I'll talk about it in a second, the new changes to Shadows completely redefines the combat system. And that makes you completely rethink which personas you have, because no longer, the way I always play Persona is I look for getting the beefiest, strongest, and like most tanky personas I possibly can so I can just clear house myself. That's what I always try to do. And then the other guys are there to kind of support me, heal me. And if I don't have a persona that has, say, electricity at this moment, I can get Ryuji to use electricity in the next bit. Now I go for more personas that have a variety of different stuff so I can act as a member of the team who is more flexible than the others. Which then allows me to utilize Baton Pass at its best. So while Baton Pass itself hasn't been changed too drastically, the game around it has shifted in a way that makes it more essential. They've also made it so that guns restock their ammo after every battle, not just because not just leaving and coming back into the, the palace. Every single battle you get new ammo, which makes the ammo and makes guns feel like a whole other element and a whole other properly implemented aspect. Because in a way the guns kind of felt like, oh no, I've got nothing else I can do, I'll use a gun type of thing. I'll use Arn's machine gun to try and hurt everyone type of thing. They've now actually made it like an implemented, consistent part of the gameplay and it is so much better. They've also done some major changes to some of the shadows which I won't go into as it gets explained pretty late in the first palace and it's basically the joy of this game is just discovering this new stuff so I don't want to spoil as much as possible. Uh, experience it, that's what I'll tell you. Uh, but once again though, I am still quite early on in the game. I've only beaten the first palace, so on and so forth. The new content will become much clearer and more prevalent as I keep going through. It's obviously lighter in the beginning stuff because of course it is. It's a very long game, they need to stretch out the new stuff. So far the only thing that's really annoyed me, and it annoyed me quite a bit, was the fact I put hundreds of hours into Persona 5. Hundreds of hours. I've played through it multiple times. And they gave me 50,000 money when they scanned my system, found that I put literally hundreds of hours into the original game, bought it at full price, and they gave me 50,000. And some potion stuff. Like, really? Really? I, I feel like I should be rewarded in some fashion for continuously supporting them in this fashion. I feel like I should have been given a golden mask or a different costume, a costume that only people who, uh, when first buying Persona 5, have already, Persona 5 Royale, have already played Persona 5, they should be rewarded that. It should be a visual thing to say this person has supported us and we want to thank them. I should be given something like that. Or, if you don't want to do something like that, give me, once they scan and find out that I've played Persona 5 and beaten it, give me the opportunity to disable tutorial cards from popping up saying you can do this, 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 and this at these times and this weather thing. Let me disable that then. If I if it scans and finds out I play Persona 5, let me disable that type of stuff. I feel like that is a massive missed opportunity and overlook for someone like myself and, and hundreds of fans, thousands of fans who have done the same thing 
and uh, it's very disappointing. So is Persona 5 Royale worth picking up? I think absolutely, especially for me, absolutely. The quality of this game is undeniable. And the addition of the new content, which is literally more than some games have in their entirety, is absolutely worth the additional $45 for me, at least. But for others, $45 from a base game to more or less a souped up version of the first game might be too much. In that case, wait for a sale. Don't feel like you need to pick it up right away. Of course, the longer you wait, the more likely you'll be spoiled on a lot of stuff. But, I mean, that's the internet. But this game has honestly been monumentally worth it for me. Uh, I'm really happy with it. I'm ex so excited to keep going with it. And it has been so worthwhile, the purchase for me. Well, there you have it. Those are my thoughts on Persona 5 Royale. Are you going to pick it up? Anyway, let me know in the comments down below, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.